there and welcome back to the channel. I am Kathleen McGivern and I am Ms. Arcastic and today I'm going to be diving in on some new ideas for teaching art um, with the theme of spring but also including it with some more cross-curricular elements in this episode. So let's dive on in and let's make some art. right now I like the idea of combining more um, art elements with crafts so it's not just cutting out colored paper and assembling but also adding some mixed media elements for engagement and also for kids to uh, learn about and understand art making mediums and materials um, but also allowing some choice based elements in there so it gives that more experimentation and play uh, all incorporated in there right so more choices involved and then also incorporating more cross curricular elements so um, creating a craft but then also doing either a non-fiction or fiction writing uh, based on that craft so we're kind of combining a few different things um, and that's going to not only increase student engagement but it's also going to create a more depth in learning and then also um, it's not just being a craft for the sake of craft, right? The craft is inspiring writing. So it's gonna be writing that's inspired by the craft. So it's kind of like the hook for the writing piece, um, but then also they get to do some uh, art curricular competencies in there as well. All right, so my idea for the craft is to do a spring flower. You can make your students a flower template and then you can copy it. Um, for me, I like to create different uh, elements that you can cut and glue and assemble. So for instance, these leaves were added um, and cut and glued on. These little elements up here, these are all different ones that students can pick from and they can cut out their favorite ones and add as many as they would like. Um, and then even the faces, I like to give pre-made eyes and mouths and then a different, a few different ones. So they have some more choice available and then they can cut them out and glue them on as well. And then for here, for the petals, I've actually done wax resist painting. So they've done line art on the petals um, with their wax crayons and then they can paint over top with watercolor painting. Paint paints for a wax resist um, effect. Now if you don't have watercolor paints, you can always use temper paint and just water it down a lot and mix it so it's not goopy but like a watery paint. And then voila, you got watercolor paint essentially. All right, so this is what I do for my patterns. I give a choice sheet. This is my, oops, that's upside down now. It was right side up. Pick a pattern page. Um, so it gives three different patterns in a row and then they can circle which three from each row they're going to use. And that way it gives them some directions. They don't have no ideas, not staring at the big page, wondering, I don't know what to do. I don't know what kind of lines to create. I don't know what to draw. Um, they have some ideas, but then they also have choice. It's not like half to do zigzag lines or whatever. They, ha they have some variety to choose from, and that also gives them more power. Um, they're gonna be more engaged with the craft and, or the artwork because they get to make it what they would like it to be, right? Um, it speaks to their interests, not just generic stuff. And then also, um, it's gonna make all of them different. They're not gonna all look the same, and that's really cool too. So this one's also available as a pre-made package with all the elements pre-done and made and ready to go with all your lesson plans, materials, worksheets, rubrics, and all the writing available, writing worksheets as well. So the planning pages and two different types of writing papers, so for like a primary and uh, intermediate sort of lines, if you will. Um, this is all available in the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teacher Store, and you can grab this resource in the link below in the description of this video. Um, this is called the Spring Craft and Write. How cute is a spring craft and write? All right, my next idea for you to do with your students is to create a duckling line art project. So you can create some duckling inspired artworks with your students. Um, I love this duckling. Um, I love ducklings. I love ducks, period. I just love them. I have a whole bunch of wild ones that just um, migrate to my factory every year and like they're my friends. I give them all names. There's like Charles and Martha, there's Alice, and it's the same ducks that come back every year. And no, they don't all look the same. There's actually some that like Charles, they're all our babies of Martha and Charles. And Charles is like a really white mallard. He's like, he must be crossbred to my backyard duck at some point. <laughs> Anyways, but he's wild. 
he's a wild mallard, but he's white with a brown head. It's super weird. So all their babies look weird. I know where they've come from. All right, super distracted. Nobody, I don't think you care about Martha and Charles, but I do. Anyways, so definitely artwork because it's actually cute, but this one is using some line to create texture on the Duckling. This is a great primary art project and it is using brown oil pastel to draw. So you're gonna draw all your duckling and the flowers, things that you think of in the spring and lines in the background to create texture of wind with your oil pastels. And then you're going to paint over top with your temper paints. So this is taking advantage of some of the temper paint that you might have around that you're like, I don't know what to do with this stuff. It's kind of weird sometimes, but right? it's kind of goofy sometimes. Um, but this one's a great one. So you're drawing on top, so you got crisp lines, but which you cannot do with temper paint. So you put your crisp lines on first, color in anything like the eye that might um, be hard to paint, and then you paint over top with your oil pastels, and then look at how bright and cute this is. Now, if you want this full art tutorial, fully planned with all your step-by-step -step instructions and your lesson plans, your handout worksheet, assessment rubrics, reflections, all pre-done for you, you can grab it in the link below in the description of this video. All right, and final idea for what you could do with your students is to do a spring art and write. So they can make an artwork for spring. You could do uh, ladybugs, you can make ducks, you can make flowers, you can make any baby animals. You can do spring type flowers like tulips and hyacinths um, and, uh, and daffodils or crocuses, whatever spring things you could come up with a brainstorm or do a think pair share with your students of different spring things you might see in the spring like cherry blossoms um, whatever it is and seeds growing I love that idea whatever it is and then you can do a right so they can create an artwork if you want to leave it more choice based you can let them decide on creating an artwork for it or um, you can pick a topic and then they can you can just guide an art project or an artwork for something to do with spring and then create a writing piece or based on that artwork. So they could create, um, do a nonfiction uh, writing about things, flowers they might see in spring or animals that are born or the changes that you observe in the spring. Or you could do a fiction writing about a story. You could do a story of um, a frog at a pond or like a tadpole at a pond and the adventuring and, and turning into a frog or a butterfly that's newly uh, hatched from uh, a cocoon and it's flying around to, or, to different flowers or bees pollinating those initial little spring flowers and they're so hungry and they're looking for food and finally some crocuses are out, whatever. I'm just coming up with ideas on top of my head at the moment. And then do, so we're doing an artwork and then which is going to do your art piece, right? Your art competencies or curricular content that you need to meet. And then you're also going to do writing that's in, um, inspired by your artwork. So then it's going to be a, use your artwork as a prompt for the writing. And then you can tackle um, all your writing stuff. And kids are going to be excited to do the writing because the hook was the artwork. So it's informing both. And you can display them together as an art and write activity. Now, one of, another idea is you could do a spring flower. I like to do little pick pieces, um, quick reference images. So I give different petal types. So I'd like to maybe you do like, I'll do the same type of thing, but they have some elements that they can choose. Like they can pick their own style of petal. They can pick their own style of leaf that they're gonna draw. And they can pick their own style of face that they're gonna add to their flower. And then I put this one in oil pastel. And uh, this one is, Water, it is watercolor paint. I couldn't tell if I watered down my temper paint, you know. I like to do that sometimes. Um, but this is watercolor paint on top. It could do the watered down temper paint. And then it gives a nice little flower. Um, it's a quick and easy activity if you're just looking to do something. Get some art done, that's mixed media. But then get the writing piece going with your students. This is a great way to tackle that. Then um, if you're wanting this pre-done with all your templates, all your reflections, rubrics, assessment, your nonfiction writing and writing planning pages plus the actual paper and with writing prompts and some with no writing prompts on it. I gave like super, like a ton of options. You can pick the ones that make sense for you and what you're teaching the moment. Like if you're teaching nonfiction, then you can do the nonfiction. If you're teaching fiction, you can do fiction or you can do both, it's up to you. Um, I would not probably do both. That's a lot to ask of the kids. <laughs> pick one or the other and you can always do the different, the opposite one the following year, right? Cause then that makes that resource, that same resource really good for multiple years, right? You can switch it and do something different later. Or you just use a nonfiction planning right pages for just a writing lesson in general. That's not connected to this. Cause lots of different prompts. 
Anyways, uh, you can find this spring art and write, spring flower art and write in the description below uh, as well. And I'll link to that so you can grab it nice and easy for all three of these. So that's the spring flower art and write, the ducking, duckling line art, and the spring flower craft. They're all available or you could figure it out and make it on your own. But if you're not really into the planning part um, and you don't want to plan these yourself and make all the step-by-steps and do all the tutorials and make your examples, you'd rather just have the example done because I'll give that to you as well. Then you can grab it in the description below and then you'll have your example done, all your templates made, all your lesson plans will just be ready to go. And you'll be like, oh, wow, that took all of one click and I'm done, download it, good to go. I have, I can go and print it off as soon as I get to work. So that's an option, or again, you can make it yourself and that's really cool too. These are just some ideas to get you started on thinking about inspiring art, um, making skills and kids exploring playful techniques and experimentation and creating art based on their own interests within your classroom. I'm so excited for you to dive on it and I want to hear from you what spring activities, no matter what kind of um, a subject, what are your favorite spring activities to do in any subject in your classroom? I would love to hear your ideas. That way we can kind of bounce off each other in the description below, kind of like a cool collaborative piece, if you will. Different teachers coming up with their ideas. You can be like, oh, I can get inspired by each other. Oh my gosh, isn't that so amazing? That's like the greatest thing about YouTube. So please let me know your favorite spring activities to do in the comment section below this video. And I will see you in the next episode, which is Earth Day Art Activity Ideas for your classroom. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe to this channel and help me get to my next goal, which is 10,000 subscribers. I promise I'm gonna do an art attack challenge for you, a painting for you, um, some sort of challenge. Like I did my 10 minute versus 10 hour painting video. Uh, that was super fun. I'll do a different challenge for you at 10,000 subscribers. So please help me get there by subscribing to this channel. The only way that my channel is going to get new subscribers is if, is if people subscribe. And please like this video. It really helps with the algorithm um, actually be like, oh look, this this video, I'm going to help. I'm going to show it to other people because somebody liked it. That's literally the only way that YouTube works. <laughs> it's so sad. That's why everybody's like, please like my video. Because YouTube will just like literally shove you in a corner and hide you if you don't. So please like this video, subscribe. And again, I want to hear you in the comments section below. Um, so we can do some collaboration on your favorite spring activities. And I will see you in the next episode, which again is the Earth Day Art Activities. And you can get that link in the description below as well. Um, and I will see you there.